Welcome to your organic chemistry prac. Should have a bit of fun with this one, it's quite enjoyable. You'll be doing a, a variety of different reactions, none of them too difficult, a lot of test tube reactions to learn more about the chemicals that you're working with. But before we go any further with all of that, we've got to stop and talk safety. Safety is a big deal in this experiment. Depending on what your background is, this may be the most dangerous series of experiments that you've done. Gloves are mandatory. If you spill anything on your gloves, get them off, wash your hands, replace them, and then carry on. Nothing down the sink, everything goes into waste. And like always, safety glasses, closed shoes, and lab coats are a must. You'll also be doing almost all of your work in the fume cupboards. We've got to be right on top of that. I mean, today you're using substances that are toxic, that are corrosive, that are absorbable through the skin. We've removed all the known carcinogens for you, so that's nice. You're working with sodium metal, which uh, reacts very violently and flammably with water. which is a particular problem when you're working in an organic chemistry lab where you've got other flammable chemicals around. So lots of safety issues to be aware of. Your demonstrators will talk to you about these and how you can navigate the lab safely. But now that we've mentioned that, well, we'll leave the full discussion for your lab. Let's talk about what you can get out of this lab class. First of all, there are a lot of things that you should be able to get, a lot of help in your organic chemistry that's not specifically related to this prac. For example, this prac should help you learn your functional groups. So when you see molecules like these, you'll immediately be able to identify what type of molecule they are and then eventually what type of reactions they might undergo. I'd like you to be able to look at this molecule, see that it has the double bond there and that that makes it an alkene. Or the second one, that OH group on its own is giveaway for an alcohol. The NH2, a giveaway for an amine. Then there's the two similar ones down the bottom here, the aldehyde and the ketone, where the aldehyde has a double bond to the oxygen at the end of a molecule, and for a ketone, it's somewhere along the way in the middle. And finally, our carboxylic acid with that distinctive C double OH group. These are some examples of molecules that you should be able to recognize on site by now, and you'll get further experience with today. You'll also get more experience on how to name these molecules, but that really does come with nothing but practice, so questions from your study guide, talking to your peers, and don't forget to make use of those guided tutorials that I've made for you that will take you through the rules and naming compounds. They should be really helpful in learning you do that. But putting that aside, let's now look specifically at some of the reactions and some of the properties that you're going to be looking at today. So we'll start by looking at some different things that uh, dictate what makes a molecule soluble or insoluble in water. So if we start here, I've got ethanol, and I think that perhaps you might know from your day-to-day -day experiences that it's soluble in water. But the reason for that, why? Well, that OH group is a polar group. There's a substantial electronegativity difference between the oxygen and the hydrogen, and that makes this molecule polar by water and as a general rule like dissolves like so polar molecules will dissolve with other ones whereas non-polar uh, liquids or materials won't dissolve in polar solvents so when you add ethanol to water something like this experiment here you would expect them to dissolve you would expect to just see one single layer of liquid form as opposed to a molecule like this. You can see on the left of screen that I've got the molecule butane. Unlike ethanol, butane has no polar groups. It's all just carbon and hydrogen. They have a very small electronegativity difference, and that makes this a non-polar molecule. So we wouldn't expect it to dissolve in water. If you then try a test like that, if you try and mix a polar liquid with a non-polar liquid, I've chosen butanol in this case, and butanol you can see that they don't mix, and this is shown in the appearance of two layers that form in our mix. So you can see the water layer on the bottom and the non-polar layer on the top. So very easy to do the experiment. I want you to focus on understanding why you see what you see. There are other things that we can do to manipulate the miscibility of a material in water. So again, back to our ethanol. This is a polar molecule. It has that polar OH group and a very short non-polar hydrocarbon chain. So the polar group makes it soluble. But what happens if you increase the length of that carbon chain? As that hydrocarbon chain gets longer and longer, the non-polar region of the molecule gets more and more dominant, and therefore you'd expect molecules, even if they do have a polar group, if they have a large non-polar group with it, that tends to dominate the behavior of the molecule, and that tends to make it insoluble in water. And so you'll explore that for yourselves too. 
There are also a couple of chemical reactions that you'll look at that are responsible for solubilizing a previously insoluble material. This isn't one of them, but it's an example in kind. So here I've got a butyl amine compound. That large hydrocarbon group means it's likely to be insoluble despite the small polar amine group. But if we react it with an acid, this becomes an acid-base reaction, which allows us to form a charged, highly polar end on the molecule. And that then has the potential to make it soluble. Now, will it work on? not? Well, you'll find out in the lab. The other part of your lab today is going to be doing functional group testing. For all of these different functional groups that are of interest to us, you're going to learn how we can test in the lab to see whether they are present on a molecule or not. So simple wet chemical tests to tell us whether they are there. I've got an example of one here testing for alkenes and you can see that there's quite a change in the system that we see. The change of that purple colour to a colourless solution and a brown precipitate and that's a clear indicator of the presence of an alkene. So not only would I like you to be able to do these reactions and then draw meaning from what you see, but at times it would be good if you can explain the reaction too. For example, here I've got another reaction that's useful to help predict the presence of an alkene or an alkyne. So we're adding bromine water to our compound. I'm hoping you know from your lectures that that bromine will add across the double bond. It will take part in the addition reaction and you'll end up with a product like this. So again, this prac should be explicitly tied to your theory, learning about both the physical properties of different functional groups, about solubility of these different molecules in water, and then finally learning about the functional groups themselves, about how they react, and about how you can identify their presence. Look, safety first today, please really do be careful, listen to all of the advice that your demonstrators are giving you, and apart from that, really enjoy it, it should be lots of fun.